Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Playmo Fudo, and today I'm going to be teaching you tools to Gunpla. What all do you need? What should you invest in? What's worth investing for a beginner, moderate, and I'm not quite at the advanced, but I got a pretty good idea of what one might want. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about everything that I have. This is actually just one of the tools that I do use. We're going to go ahead and go into depth on a bunch of other small tools that you can actually use, and then there will be tutorial videos to come on some of these products, okay? I got your back. Let's right on. So, having a look at the overall display, this is just everything that I have. It may seem kind of overwhelming to, to look at all this and be like, oh my god, I need all of this for gun flip building? No. No, you do not. Real talk, you really just need like two of these things to gun flip build. And truth be told, the rest of it is to kind of help comfort the build and just make it overall easier. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the number one simple stuff, right? So first off, we have my actually newly acquired Tamiya tweezers, all right? These are, oh gosh, I wish I kept the tag. I wish I knew the exact size, but I went for tweezers that had kind of a finer point to them. And the reason that I went and got these is because the ones that I had before, I actually have them right here. I got these at Target. These just were not cutting it for me. See how old they are? I've been using these for about two, three years. I've got a little bit of plaster on them now. But the thing I don't like about them is that they have these ridges at the end of them, which would sometimes screw me whenever I was trying to put my stickers. So the fact that I have kind of a finer point, you see how it's just a straight, straight edge? There's no ridge, no bump to it. This has helped me tremendously. I just did a high grade Banshee Unicorn and it actually helped quite a lot, right? So let's talk about the next thing. You're gonna need a pair of nippers. These are the number one things that you're gonna need, especially if you're new to gun flip building. Note to self, there's entry grade Gundams that you don't actually have to have, you know, any kind of cutters, any glue, anything. You just pop them out of the runners and put them together. But the reason why I have these is because these are my Bandai uh, Bandai Spirit Entry Nippers. These are about $19 to $24, depending where you look. I, I normally get mine on Amazon because Amazon will be cool. And sometimes these will be like $15 or $25, bucks, give or take. And when they're $15, I usually go ahead and stock up. But the reason why I have two, right? I have more of a finer detail uh, nipper here. So that way, whenever I cut the runner, or I, let's say I cut a piece off of the runner first with this and I leave myself some nubs, I will then go in with this kind of finer detail right here. See how small it is? Just to kind of truly get those nub marks. Versus, you know, you're thinking, why not do it all in one? It's a little bit harder to go ahead and do that when I'm, I'm using these beginners. So these beginners aren't bad, and they're not like the worst, but like that's kind of where you bridge the gap of, you know, coming from beginner to advanced and doing advanced tech uh, techniques. It's really not that hard. Talking about the next item on the list is going to be a scalpel or aka a exacto knife or a cutting knife of some sort so that way you can truly get those nub marks off. The task of this is so you can have a fine sharp knife to be able to kind of slit and remove those nub marks. But this again is not something you need, it's just something that would make the build overall more comfortable. So, um, and talking about price points, these are about two bucks, three, three bucks, I want to say. I almost said points. I don't know why I said points. Um, and then those nippers, these that I showed you, these are roughly going to be about 30 to 40. Anything advanced nipper-wise that has like a smaller cutting edge pattern is going to be somewhere above $30. And there is a brand known as God Hands, which you've probably heard of. And these are not them. And uh, those can range from at cheapest, I think like 30 to 60. Um, so let's talk about the next thing that we need. All right, so this is Tamiya's Extra Thin Cement. It's pretty much glue, it's plastic glue, all right? And they're fixing to change the look of it from what I recall, so it's no longer gonna be this glass bottle. So if you have a glass bottle, save it, that shit's vintage. But yeah, this is glue for pretty much all kinds of bad stuff that may happen to you. You can tell I kinda have a little bit too much glue there, right there at the, the V-fin, 
and that's because I had accidentally broke it. So things will happen, things do happen, it's okay, it's a part of the process, but that's why they make other stuff, you know, like the glue, for you to be able to just kind of excessively or accessibly be able to kind of fix your mistakes. And this stuff can range from like five to 10 bucks, I believe. It's been a while since I've got this because, you know, this stuff lasts for a fat minute. All right, so actually this is something I totally forgot to put in the video. I don't know why I didn't. It's definitely something you would need. This is called a part splitter. Of course, you can tell I painted this one too. This is a blue one from USA Gundam, but this is super convenient for if you're trying to kind of pry something open. No longer and gone are the days of having to use your teeth and maybe even an X-Acto knife. So this can come in super handy. It comes super clutch for me so far. So now we're going to kind of bridge the gap from the beginner stuff that you need to the more advanced, okay? So some of this stuff you may think like, oh yeah, that's super, super easy. Like that's, that shouldn't even really be in the advanced. I should have been, been in the beginner. Yes, you're truly right, but not everybody can know about these products and know everything exists. So let's go ahead and start with my scribing tool. So this is a scribing tool that I had actually ordered off Amazon and essentially what it is is it has this kind of like a sharp bladed edge to it with different millimeter. Uh, you get uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0 in this set. This was about 10 or 15 bucks, maybe even 12 I want to say. But it does come with a little Allen key so that way you can kind of insert it into here, loosen it, and then be able to remove this. Now, you hear that rattle? It's because this has an initial chamber for you to put one more in there. Um, I tend to use the two that I favor, and now there's a reason why I show you this, all right? Scribing is a way for you to kind of add excess detail to a Gundam. Like this is scribing right here. Uh, as we all know, the RX-782 uh, shield doesn't have that, so it's just something you can do to kind of splice up your, uh, your Gunpla and just kind of make it look a little bit more edgy. So there's other things you can order. Um, and these are everywhere. You, I, I think I got mine off of eBay, truth be told. But these are like metal frames that you can kind of tape over a Gundam part. And essentially, you see how there's those little lines? You would just essentially take that little sharp edge blade that I showed you and just kind of etch lines into it. Now, to hold this in place, right? Because you do get multiple different kinds. There's multiple different designs. But yeah, to backpack off of those, something super, super simple you would need is scribing tape, all right? I don't remember the millimeter of this. I want to say it was six millimeter or 0 0.6 millimeter, but this is scribing tape. This is essentially what you would tape a little bit over and just kind of, let's say this is, this is my Gundam, right? I would get one of those squares and I would just kind of tape a line so that way the part sits there. And you can even put your finger on it as you move and you would just kind of scribe over and then just kind of keep moving, make sure you get your detail. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you kind of hold on to it because depending upon how you uh, tape your stuff down, it may not essentially uh, hold steady and you don't want the piece to move. So. While we're on the subject of tape, this is called masking tape. A lot of you probably already know what masking tape is, so it's not new to you. What the do, Basil? But anyways, this is something that you would essentially put over a Gundam if you were going to paint, or if you're going to use any markers or anything like that. This is where having a, a blade would come in handy because essentially what you would do is you would use your cutting mat or something that you have, find your distance, find your shape, and then just kind of cut it out, put that over your Gundam, paint, Peel the, peel the tape off and then you'd have the original paint still there. So yeah, masking tape and scribing tape. Again, probably something a beginner could use, but again, I kind of felt like it belonged in the advanced category. So while on the topic of painting, these are actually some marker sets you can get and don't don't worry, these aren't the exact colors that you'll get in these, these packs, so please don't correct me and please don't think that you can get these colors. You'll just have to go out there and venture and these usually range from about 20 bucks. They're super useful. I just kind of color code them to what I use the most and what I value the most. Yeah, these are super useful and they also come in a little, uh, they have a little hanger so if you have thumbtacks you can just put them to your wall, I'll show you here in a second and then you can just hang them up. And it's just, it's overall really badass, super comforting and very minuscule. So like I just hung mine up. Now let's talk about this. This is God tier, okay? This is the Gundam Marker EX Silver. All right, this will range from about 10 to 15 bucks depending where you go, but this is a lifesaver. Let me tell you why you wanna use this, okay? Do you guys see the metallic in him, the metallic reflection? That's that metallic gold that I was showing you a while ago. His blades, metallic silver. They give a finer touch to it. Even like up here, 
This was gray at a point in time. It was straight up that color of gray. But I went ahead and put a little bit of a fine line of color to it. So having that can truly make the difference in a Gunpla build. It can just kind of make your things pop out. So markers are a win. I would say beginners and advanced and, and, and moderate medium. All of them, all of them use markers. You're, you're lying if you're, if you're telling me you've never used a marker of any kind. They're super useful, super awesome. Here's some other variations uh, that I have of them. These aren't metallic, well, at least these aren't metallic. Usually you can tell what's metallic because it'll have kind of a white, uh, white sticker to it and it'll kind of tell you, which we'll talk about next. You can go ahead and get like, if you're working on a, on a red Zaku and you have a, a little bit of a white nub mark, just get this, go over the baseline of it and you should be good. You don't have to go over the whole part, you can just go over like that baseline of where the nub mark would be and it, it actually kind of highlights the armor a little bit too and you're hiding a nub mark. So markers, I would have to say definitely a smart investment. Definitely get yourself some. This is sanding right here. This is sandpaper, sanding grits, whatever you want to call it. But this is also, I think, from Tamiya. It comes in different levels of grits. I'm actually still kind of learning how this works out myself. So I have 400, 600, uh, 3,000, 1,000, 1,500, and yeah, that's just kind of the, the mark that this comes in. So essentially, this is the, the, the actual siding of what you would use to sand down and the back just lets you know, right? So it's probably a pain in the ass to just be using one of these and getting a Gundam part and just say you're going over it and everything. It might be a pain in the ass to hold these. So this is where you can get a little bit crafty, okay? You can just get some straight up, you know, dollar store popsicle sticks. I have these from when I was messing with epoxy resin, but uh, I went ahead and turned them into, oops, went ahead and turned them into sanding sticks. So you see I have all of these labeled here. You've probably been looking at this the whole time. This is their number to help me, plus a little soul leader symbol. So I went ahead and just kind of, uh, I could have probably trimmed it out and it's probably destroying some of y'all's OCD that there's an outline edge there, but it doesn't matter to me. You know, this was just something I did about half a year ago, but it's super, super resourceful because it helps. Uh, as you can see, I definitely use these quite a bit. Some of these I definitely don't, like the 3000, I think I just barely tried that out last night to see what it would do. Um, not really a fan of it, but again, I'm still learning myself. These I would consider to be in the middle class of Gundam building, you know, the, the moderate, you know, uh, immediate, if you will. So I wouldn't suggest these for beginners because these are a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but if you're open to it, beginners, hey, don't, don't let me stop you. Go ahead and get yourself some of these. Um, now what you can do to glue these, uh, don't ask me uh, why I used it, but again, like I said, I had an epoxy resin phase, so I just made some epoxy resin because I was working on some other stuff, and I, I slabbed just a little bit on the popsicle stick, and then I went ahead and placed them over. So essentially, that's what I use. You can use glue. I'm sure glue would work just fine, but at the time, I didn't really have anything. I didn't have like Mod Podge. I didn't have anything super creative. Now, this stuff can range for, I think, about like 10 to 12 dollars maybe even less depending where you uh you get it from but of course uh shipping is a bitch too so make sure you of course um you know work something out there and just kind of make sure that you're also getting other stuff other tools because you don't want to pay 10 dollars shipping for one thing you know what i mean so all right now we're going to talk a little bit about something that actually kind of borders the bridge between beginner and advanced so these are panel lining markers. These are different types that you can get. Note the, the kind of image that you get because this, this means like it's like a fine marker tip to it. And then these two mean that it has like a, a needle tip to it. So this is a gray panel lining pin and this is a black panel lining pin. This is also a black marker panel lining pin. Um, I think this is just more of a comfort. Uh, it just kind of adds less pressure or it, it just kind of takes off some pressure so that way you, you know you you have room to truly get what you're trying to and then you can always use you know there's a reason why i have this stuff but you can actually use enamel thinner to be able to thin, uh to be able to get like a q-tip usually i have a lot of q-tips here on my desk so i'll just dab a little bit kind of rinse it off at the the rim and then i'll just kind of go over some parts uh and that's just how you'll clean the excess and we'll have a video on the how to do that again we're gonna have a video on how to panel line and i think we're gonna do uh how to weather here pretty soon but why to panel line panel lining can make a difference because you see how my shield here is just kind of plain white it definitely looks by the way that's the silver marker all right that is all silver marker that's that's another reason why to use a silver marker because all of that would have just been blue you know what i mean so this is essentially how the piece looks brand new 
And this is what it can look like after you've panel lined it a little bit. Don't mind the meshes. We learned to top coat after um, panel lining and everything. Or I mean, we learned to top coat first and then panel line. But for the most part, this is essentially what you can do. You just add a lot of finer edges, a lot of details to your to your piece. Oh shit, that's silver. Excuse me. I thought that was uh, I thought that was marker panel lining thin. Uh, the black panel lining too. But uh, for the most part, I think I did pretty good. This blue part is uh, part of the shield as well. But yeah, it's pretty dope. I like it. It's, it makes my builds pop out. It makes them stand out. Um, also, here is what panel lining can do if you do it to a Gundam. So it's not the world's best panel lining, but I think I did a good job. I did this Xia about half a year ago. So, you know, we've definitely grown and learned a lot since then. Uh, my Xia is kind of jank. Don't look at it too much, but I think I did pretty badass with the decals. Now, speaking of decals, you can also get something called Mark Setter, which is a type of liquid that you can actually place to make your stickers just kind of slide on, uh, stick better, and just kind of, it, it makes it look a lot cleaner because you do get a lot of these stickers here where you still see like a base of the outline and this can kind of help out with that as well. Another type of panel lining liquid you can get is the Tamiya panel lining. This and enamel thinner go hand in hand because this is like stupid easy. It comes with like a little brush and all you have to do is a little goes a long way my homies. You just gotta tap this to any piece that has ridges in it and it will just slide and fill the gaps and then uh, if you over kind of drip so like if I had just placed it right there it would go through and again we're gonna have a video on how to panel line because we have some uh, Gundams that we're building right now and we have some Gundams that some awesome volunteers are uh, volunteering and offering up so we can film the panel lining and then they get a free panel line Gundam out of it but yeah for the most part that's just something else you can rock with now the last Thing I have over here is Mr. Cement S. This is again kind of going to be borderline for I'd say the people who are uh, immediate to advance because if you're ever messing with styrene, styrene is another type of plastic that you you can use to make cool stuff like uh, I'll show you in here in a second. But you can cut out a certain type of plastic to any kind of design you want, and then this is the type of glue that you would want to put on the styrene and then place to your gunpla, and it would actually hold. So again, huge difference between these two. You don't want to use this when messing with styrene. There is a specific type of glue for styrene because it won't kind of melt through, it won't F it up, and it'll just kind of look overall better. Now we're going mobile for this next part. Now, the last thing I think any Gundam builder, especially a new Gundam builder, is gonna be a self-healing cutting mat. Something you can just kind of safely kind of operate on, something you could safely just kind of, like I have my computer desk here and I have all this out, but I tend to just like to have my mats. Uh, you know, I have them for different reasons. Whenever I'm painting or I got some epoxy stuff going on, I'll use my, my very first mat that I have here. You can tell it's a lot dirtier. It's just a basic green side on the other end. Uh, I had this in my other room, but I figured, hey, I might as well use it out here. Also, feel free to customize. You can definitely feel free to use, uh, you know, your your own stickers, and it just kind of makes it makes it funner, right? Now to wrap it up with my absolute absolute favorite tools of all. All right. Now these are Tamiya weathering kits. These are an all-in-one weathering kit. You need no paint. You need no thinner. You need nothing. The cool part about this stuff is it's only ten bucks. And essentially what it is, I've already opened this, I don't know why it's so hard to open, but what it is, is it's a little paint palette, or like a little weathering palette, that essentially comes with its own little brush that you can use to kind of choose what you're going to get, and just kind of how you're going to weather it according to what you're doing. So like, I did this RX-78 over here, and I think I used um, just the silver, and I used the orange rust, and I'll show you exactly how. So if you take a look at the shield, shield is mad dirty at the top that's a little bit of the gun metal there there's a little bit of orange on the corners I could have probably did more and I'm glad that it's kind of not so detailed on the panel lining because that means I can actually probably use this again for my panel lining video but uh, for the majority it just kind of helps you give the Gundam a little bit of an excess use and wear and tear I uh, put a little bit of rust over here too on the backpack sorry for the flashing lights and everything I went ahead and did a little bit of gold marker inside a little bit of silver Actually, no, this was that other silver marker that I was telling you about, but I did gold. Usually gold comes in handy with me for my, my mecha hands and stuff. The fact that I took this step here, let me grab it for y'all guys. So the fact that I took this step here and, and took the plunge to make this diorama, I think 
kind of lets me proudly say I took my step, my first step from immediate to advanced because this is just not something you can just buy. This isn't something you can, actually this is dead ass something you can make overnight. I made this within 12 hours. Um, it's it's just something that you can you can make a little bit of imagination. So I mean to have you know like this sitting at my desk and I'm sitting here wondering like oh man what project am I gonna do next? You know what I mean? I have stuff like this and, and so many ideas floating in my mind and I would have never gotten here if not for just watching YouTube videos or, or watching other people build or asking questions and stuff like that. Truly, I think it was all the questions that I've asked and the many Gundams that I've built that just kind of led me to wanting to do more and to wanting to brew, you know, bring realism to life. But you guys, uh, that's it for me. I think we're gonna go ahead and call it there. There's really nothing else I can think of. We've already kind of gone through a lot of tools and everything. So uh, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe because this is actually gonna be the video for you guys to comment on so we can do another giveaway. We're gonna be giving away SD Heroes 00 Command Package Gundam. Uh, brand new, unbuilt, I hope one of you enjoys it. The other giveaway prize, as you can tell, is gonna be the RX-78 to Gundam Origin Types. For me to you, go Gunpla, keep building, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and may all your work and progresses come out rad as hell. And if you do got it, uh, if, if you got Discord, let me know, I'll go ahead and try to post the link to my Discord, so that way we can get a lot more of you involved, and just kind of, you know, talk Gunpla, truly. Later.